I'm back. Yes, it's been a while. Uh, good morning. It is Sunday coffee with the Azorian one. I am the Azorian one with an appropriate mug today, I feel. Yes, it's Wade Wilson. It's my Deadpool mug right there for you. Once again, drinking Phil's coffee from San Francisco. Hmm? And, uh, yeah, it's been a while. Long time no see. Three weeks it's been? Yeah. So here's why it's been so long. Um, uh, Mr. Kamisa hat. Here's why it's been so long. Um, first off, it was, uh, what was my first thing off? What was it again? Oh, for Infinity War. I took that Sunday off because I didn't want to hear or get any spoilers about anything during this show. So I took that off, okay? Rightfully so, I think. Uh, secondly, after that, uh, my wife was off on a business trip and I dropped her off at the airport. Uh, therefore, by the time I got back, couldn't really have a show. So, that's why there. And then third Sunday was Mother's Day. And, come on. Like, I'm going to have a show on Mother's Day. It's her day. I made breakfast. We went out. I'm going to have a show. I can have a show. Sorry. Mm. Okay, wait. Took a while to get on the air, and they're already done with their breakfast, the two monsters over there, so... It's going to be a short episode. So they're, they're in one of those moods. Anyway, a um, little bit of news for you. Uh, there is the... This is, of course, the opening weekend for that guy right there. Mr. Mr. Deadpool. Mr. Pool. Mr. Dead of the Pool. Mr. Wade Wilson. Uh, from what I'm seeing, reports are still saying it's somewhere between 125 to 133 million this weekend. It has taken the top spot over Avengers Infinity War, uh, finally. Uh, Avengers has fallen to uh, second place, making still 29 million this weekend for a movie that's been out for four weeks. It's, it's a good haul. So right now your top two movies, while not both of Marvel Studios, are both Marvel creations. Okay, so that's always a good thing. Hey, hey, you had breakfast. You ate already. Stop. No, go lay down. Go lay down. She's being whiny. She's had breakfast. No, go lay down. She's also jealous of the boys. Down. Thank you. Attitude this morning. So, you have that. You've got the two Marvel guys up top. Deadpool number one. Infinity War number two. So... This didn't quite break, from what I heard, Deadpool's first record, but it's still a healthy number. I don't know if the uh, worldwide numbers are in. I'm not sure if Deadpool had that wide of a uh, release as Infinity War did. But success for Ryan Reynolds and Deadpool and everyone involved. Uh, it was, uh, it was a, quite a marketing campaign. It's what happens when someone is involved in something they love, which is Ryan Reynolds, because the man was involved in pretty much every aspect of promoting this film. And it was... Beautifully done, from Celine Dion's music video to to um, uh, there's a lot of noise going on right now. Celine Dion's music video and the David Beckham commercial and all of that. I have not seen it yet, not seen the movie yet. Heard good things. I'm hearing that it's better than the first one. I'm hearing it's better than the first one. Uh, I'm hearing it's funnier than the first one, which. My wife and I loved the first one, so I can only imagine what part two does. But I'm hearing great things. Uh, I'm going to let my dog out real quick, because I think that might be the issue she's having, even though she's not sitting by the door. Be right back. Hang on. Here you come. That may have been the issue. I apologize. Yeah, she's fine now. Uh, so, hopefully soon, I'll be watching uh, Deadpool. Uh, but everyone who I know has seen it has enjoyed it. Um, so that is my news for you regarding that. Um, Ryan Reynolds supposedly is saying there won't be a third one, but I, I don't believe it, if, if that makes sense. I, I, I think there might be. I'm not going to have a third one. It, it, success. 
I mean, he'll joke more about a third one being horrible, like he did for part two. He says part two is never as good. What happens? People are saying part two is better. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm excited for it. I want to see it. I like Deadpool. Um, he provides you a... Uh, okay, wait. He provides you a different option in the superhero comic book atmosphere. Um, I want to see Peter. I want to see Peter, who joins X-Force. That, that may be the hero of the movie, in my opinion. I haven't even seen it. But I think Peter will be the hero of this film. If I'm wrong, let me know. But I, I, I'm a Peter fan. Uh, I, just, I just saw the ad. Yeah. Once again, Phil's Coffee from San Francisco. Not, not the mug, what's inside, the Wade. Uh, rounding at the top five, if you're interested, uh, coming in third was Book Club, the Diane Keaton, Jane Fonda, Candace Bergen, and Mary Steenburgen joint. Um, I, I get why this movie came out. Uh, you love Peter, okay. Now, we got Skip and Tosh, Curtis Fisher in the chat room right now. He loved Peter, so I can only imagine how great Peter will be in this. Um, yeah, th uh, third place again was uh, the uh, was book club, and I get why they release a movie like this during the he wants book good during the um, weekend of a big blockbuster film. You're providing an alternative for people who don't want to watch Deadpool or watch Avengers or, or anything. But I, I hope they never expect a huge box office take. Uh, because it's not going to happen. Uh, Mamma Mia, the first one, did come out the same weekend as The Dark Knight. And I remember uh, friends of mine who went, and they were the only ones in the theater watching Mamma Mia. And uh, they loved it because the whole theater was to them. Um, but, I, again, I understand the reason why you released that movie at the same time. You know the audience of Book Club isn't really interested in seeing Deadpool. I get it. I, I just hope they have set the bar low because when you have Avengers still in theaters and then Deadpool comes out a few weeks later, you're not going to break the top two. Third place is going to be your first place and just be happy with what you got, which they ended up getting $12.3 million. I would take a $12.3 million opening weekend. I just know it wouldn't be the, the winner for this weekend. Um, after that, there was uh, Show Dogs. Landed sixth, my bad. Show Dogs landed sixth. In the top five, uh, Life of the Party, Melissa McCarthy is at fourth. With 7.5 million for the weekend, it's made 30 million total. And Breaking In, coming in fifth, the movie with Gabrielle, Gabrielle Union, whom I adore. I am a Gabrielle Union fan. I like Sid Burnett. Anyone get that reference? Anyone get that reference? Gabrielle Union? I like Gabrielle Union, especially when she played Sid Burnett. Anyone? No, it's not from Bring It On. Mm -mm. She dated a guy named Mike Lowry. Her, her brother is Marcus Burnett. Mm -hmm. Good point, Skip and Dash. Bad Boys 2. Bad Boys 2. Yeah. Bad Boys 2. Uh, Gabriel Union was, was Sidney Burnett. There, there's Skip and Tosh with the answer. There he is. In, I've, I've liked Gabriel Union since, like, you know, Bring It On and all those days, but but it's that Sidney Burnett character that made me fall in love with her oh so much. Gabriel Union. So, breaking in, I've heard he's doing pretty well. I've heard, I've heard good reviews on it. She's... She's a bamf in it, from what I'm hearing, so that's always good. She was a bamf in Bad Boys too. just saying. And yes, I'm using a Dane Cook line. I don't care. I'm going to use it. I don't know if he's still using it. I'm going to use it. There you go. Skip and Tosh. Well done. Bad Boys 2. Which, by the way, coming out in 2020, Bad Boys 3. They've agreed to it. It's going to happen. Bad Boys 3 is happening. I hope Sid is in it as well, because she can hold her own with her big brother and former love interest. I don't know if they still are as of now after Bad Boys 2. Dwayne Wade will be fine with it. He's good. Uh, so those were your top five for the weekend. Um, 
Yeah, Deadpool, of course, no surprise, taking it. I'm hearing, again, conflicting numbers. They said 133 million for the weekend. Variety right now on their page is 125. I don't know which one is the most accurate. We'll know for sure come Monday. But that is where we stand with Deadpool being on top. Uh, and from what we know, Skip and Tosh enjoyed the film. They should just put D-Wade in it. He should be like, D-Wade should be her new boo. Uh, and, and Mike Lowry has to deal with D-Wade, which I think D-Wade, he'd be funny in it. I think he can pull comedy. Hey, LeBron did great in, um, LeBron was hilarious in Trainwreck. He, he surprised the hell out of me in Trainwreck. The guy did a good job playing against type. It, I mean, unless that's how he is, which is even funnier. Um, so I think D-Wade can hold his own in a, in, a, in a bad boys comedy. Free reign. You know, there's no limitations when, a bad boy, when it's bad boys. Or he could be the villain, Skip and Tosh says. Man. Now, a fight scene. A fight scene between D-Wade and Mike Lowry. Woo! I'd watch that. I'd watch that. Marcus would get involved somewhere, but... Yeah. Those of you wondering, I'm a big Bad Boys fan. Uh, Bad Boys was the first rated R movie I was allowed to own. It was bought for me for Christmas by my cousins, and my parents said it was fine. So I got to watch Bad Boys a lot. That was my first like R-rated movie that I got to hold on VHS. VHS. Yeah, buddy. Okay, we will. Hold on. VHS, Bad Boys. I wore that tape out. You wouldn't believe. I watched it twice a day almost. I was... Saying lions in that movie, that 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 got got me in trouble sometimes. Yeah, best Michael Bay movie, Bad Boys One. I would tie it with The Rock. I would tie with The Rock because The Rock was excellent too. But yeah, Bad Boys was that was about was Michael Bay's first movie. Michael Bay's first movie was Bad Boys. Then he made The Rock. Uh, but no, I, I was reenacting lines, and and mom and dad weren't always happy with the lines I was reenacting. There were good lines. Could not say them. Come on. Just, there was a lot of f bombs and mf and anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, Bad Boys is the first movie I got to own. VHS. Uh, funny enough, the first movie, Red Dark movie I watched in theaters was The Rock, because my dad wanted to take me because Sean Connery was in it and involved Alcatraz, and I had just recently gone to Alcatraz or I went recently after seeing that movie. There you go. There's my rated R experiences right there. Bad Boys and The Rock were my first. But Bad Boys has held a uh, close spot to my heart, and I enjoy the hell out of Bad Boys too. And that's just a just a great thrill ride. Just 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 laugh and explosions and laugh and explosions. So I'm very happy for Bad Boys Three. Uh, I heard Bruckheimer still producing, not Michael Bay directing, but Bruckheimer is producing. Uh, so I will be excited for Bad Boys Three. I'll be there opening night. I might be with Curtis, because Curtis is sharing in my bad boy's love right now in the chat room. So it might be he and I at the theater singing the song as we wait for the movie to play. Bad boys, bad boys. I want them to bring uh, my love for... It began there, you're right. It did begin there. My love for military and law enforcement movies began with those two, with Bad Boys and The Rock. Curtis has, has delved deep in the psyche of the Azorian one. You got that, man. Those blame, blame Bruckheimer and Michael Bay. Blame him. All right, boom, there it is. Curtis and the Steves. All right, Skip and Tosh and the Azorian one. Front row, well, not front row, but front and center for Bad Boys 3. Martin Luther King Weekend, 2020. I want to be humming the old theme. You know, the one, they didn't, they didn't use it in part two, but the old Bad Boys theme. Dun, 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 dun. That one, the Mark Mancina score. We're going to go in humming that. You'll look up the score. You'll find it. Even like a Hans Zimmer version of that song. That'd be great. More drums, violins, and all that. Um, so, so far there's my news for you. Deadpool 2 wins the weekend. And Curtis and I are going to go see Bad Boys 3 together. Uh, yeah, right? The, the, yeah, the, the, the second one had just Dre and, Dre and Diddy. You know, Dre put together the score, and Diddy had Shake Your Tail Feather, which, I mean, I enjoy the song. 
But I do always go back to Bad Boys 1 with their theme song. Um, anyway, this past weekend, uh, I've watched two new things that are not comic related. I apologize. I know I'm on the Capeless Crusaders channel. I know you're here watching a Capeless Crusader. Uh, but I did not watch anything comic related this weekend. I did download uh, Iron Man. Digital copy. I finally got a digital copy uh, from a friend who purchased the movie. I, I, I now own it as a gift. They've given me Iron Man. So finally I have my Marvel hero in some digital form of ownership. So I'll, I'll be... You know, playing that back and forth so I get every line down for every episode. Huh. Iron Man. Iron Man? We'll watch him sometime. Not right now, okay? But there's Spider-Man. Watch Spider-Man. Spider-Man's on right now. Um, but two things I watched this weekend. Uh, number one, my wife saw it before me, but because she saw it on her flight to Chicago, uh, and said I should watch it with her because I think I'd like it. The Greatest Showman with Hugh Jackman. Let me tell you. That was a damn fine movie. Now, that movie was was uplifting. I wanted to sing and dance after watching it. I knew two songs from the movie, and they were two good songs. I realized there's many more good songs in that movie. Um, but man, Hugh, Hugh can Hugh can slice you up with antimantium, or he can warm the cockles of your heart with his voice. Man can belt. And the whole cast was amazing. Ooh, it, it's good. It, 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 it's a it's a positive movie. It's a it's a you know. I, I, and this comes from someone who wasn't a musical guy growing up. Like if the sound of music was on, no, they want to see it. Chee Chee Bang Bang, yeah, yeah. Uh, Moulin Rouge is probably the first musical I watched that I enjoyed. Some of you are like, oh, of course, the Steve's like Moulin Rouge. He's about to buzz your ladies. Yeah, I know, I know. It caught my attention. Wife made me watch it. We were dating at that time. Became a fan. Uh, next musical I'd say I like is probably Sweeney Todd. It's bloody. It's gory. It's Tim Burton. But it's a good movie. I enjoyed it. I know. Okay. Um, so I've slowly been enjoying musicals. La La Land was outstanding. I love La La Land. And now this. The Greatest Showman. Hugh Jackman. Michelle Williams. Zac Efron, and I can't name, I think it's a lot, oh, uh, Z Zendaya, MJ's in it, and she was good, she was really good. Uh, besides those four, uh, the supporting cast who play the, the, the macabre, the, the, the circus uh, folk, they were outstanding. And the bearded lady, I don't know the actress' name, but that song, This Is Me, that's an anthem right there. And I remember watching her perform it at the Oscars, and I hadn't even seen the movie yet, but at the Oscars, I got chills watching them perform that song. It's a strong song. I get it lost to Coco, and I understand it, but man, that's a song. Uh, Hugh Jackman's song, which I can't, uh, I think it's called From Now On. Again, the guy belts it beautifully. This is the man, this is the same guy who's been clawing people up Putting claws through chests for how many movies is Hugh Jackman moving? Nine? Eight, nine movies? And the guy goes from badass to art. Like that, you know? I'm not saying that Wolverine's not art, but I mean, you know what I mean? From, from action, comic book to, you know, Tony Awards and, and, and musicals. The guy has a passion, and he, he, he. The guy can do anything. You give him any role, he's going to do it. And that proves it right there. Greatest Showman was fantastic. Enjoyed it. Um, just a good movie. Just a good, positive, uplifting film. Uh, with a message, of course. The songs themselves give away the message. After that, we started our Netflix binging. A show that we are hooked on on Netflix that is not a Marvel show. I know for once, a Netflix show... That is not Marvel related. That I'm hooked on. That I've been hooked on. And that is season two of 13 Reasons Why. Now this show is... is, uh, is It's a deep one for me. Um, it's not just a well-written, well-acted, dramatic series. Which, of 
course, I love to see. It touches on some subjects that are serious, that are close to me. Um, suicide, of course, being a major uh, proponent, or uh, not proponent, major plot element in this show. And someone who has had suicide in his family, um, my uncle and my cousin, uh, father and son, 20 year separation. Um, uh, I'm leaving on it. I'll get, get there in a second. Um, it, it, it means something to me when there's stories that about suicide that aren't just, don't do it, don't talk about it. We've been doing that for years. We've been trying to hide and cover things, and it doesn't do anything to resolve issues. Um, so I, I'm extremely interested in it because it talks about suicide, it talks about bullying, it talks about what kids go through these days. I don't know, but it go talk about what kids go through these days in a well presented dramatic art form. Um, we all talk about when we were in high school, my age, the uh, years before me. We'd say we were in school, we got bullied, but you know we didn't do what they were going through in this show. Well, Jackson, take it easy. Well, so, when we went to school, if you got bullied, you know, before there was social media, before we had our cell phones and all that, you got bullied at school, but at least you were able to come home and be away from it for a while. You, you had your shield, you were home, you could get away from it. The kids today, and like the kids in this show, they don't get away from it. They leave school, they come home, it's on their Facebook, it's on their Twitter, it's on their Instagram, it's on their Snapchat. It's on all of it. It's around the corner, it's a picture circulating. It doesn't, they don't get away from it. It's always around them. And this show touches on that. And above all else, the actors in this show are fantastic. I mean, they, 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 they're fabulous. I can see them firsthand because your boy here, as Curtis has brought up here in the chat, got to be an extra in season two, the current season of 13 Reasons Why. Uh, I have discovered where I am thanks to family and friends who have gone scanning through the show to find me. Uh, my cousin Eric... Uh, the Portuguese Hammer from the SoCal podcast Guys in Shorts Sports Los Angeles. Uh, he does not watch the show, but upon hearing that I was an extra in it, and when I said that I believed I knew where I was, he went scanning through the episode and found me in the end credits. So I am in episode 12 of season 2 of 13 Reasons Why. No, I don't have any lines. No, I don't. I am simply walking down the courthouse steps. And those of you who know me, you'll be able to spot me because you can't miss my big giant head and my hooded leather jacket. Look for the hooded leather jacket, blue thermal, and jeans. That's this guy right here. I am that guy. So if you watch episode 12 and you finish it, look to the lower left corner. Guy in leather jacket with a hoodie with a concern to get out of here face. I got a big giant head face. I'm not wearing my glasses, so everything's blurry face. That is me walking in the end before the end credits of episode 12. So there's another reason to go watch 13 Reasons Why. But uh, so far, we are on episode... We finished episode 7. Um, things are getting real, as they always do on this show. Um, someone's getting loud all of a sudden. Jackson, Jackson, keep it down. He forgets. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tough show. How many people did I, did I punch to get the job? I actually didn't have to punch anybody. Um, I got the Vinny Chase head. Thank you, Skip and Tosh. Uh, Rutu, I did uh, I didn't punch anyone. Uh, there is a casting... There's a lot of casting companies in Northern California and... Uh, <laughs> Turtle. And uh, Southern California and the Bay Area that work for productions that are going on. And 13 Reasons Why was filmed in the, in the Vallejo, um, Concord, Martinez area. And the scene that I'm involved, the scenes, if you watch this season, when they're filming the courthouse scenes, both inside and outside, those were filmed in Martinez, which is, you know, a stop on the BART station, for those of you in, in California near the Bay Area. North Martinez, Concord. 
or Martinez North Concord, whatever. It's in that area. So I just basically would, uh, you know, one day got up at four in the morning. I take that back. I got up at three in the morning. I left the house at four so I can get to Martinez by five to uh, make sure my wardrobe passed. And they're happy with my wardrobe. Sign the paperwork you have to sign. Hop on a bus. And the bus drives you to the actual street block that they've cornered off. And that's where I spent about nine hours standing on the courthouse steps, walking up and down the courthouse steps every time the director said action and cut. Uh, the coolest thing is I spent the day like five feet from the main cast. So those of you who watched the show, your main characters are Clay, Jessica, Justin, Zach, Tony, Alex. They, they were all like five feet from me. Five to ten feet the entire day. Sometimes I was closer, sometimes I was further, depending on what the director said. Uh, does the camera catch me other than that walk down the steps? I have no idea. I mean, when I was... Clay and Jessica were, like, here, where the boys are right now. And I could see the camera over there in that direction. So the lens looks like it would catch me. But, again, if they're focusing on the characters and not so much me, I'm pretty sure I'm just a blur in the background. I don't care. I got paid. I got to talk to extras. I got to talk to uh, the second assistant director. Excuse me, the assistant director. My apologies. Um, it's funny because the the second unit director, who is in charge of the extras and background talent and setting, he was the same assistant director on The Pursuit of Happiness with Will Smith, which I was an extra in as well. So it was cool because my first ever extra gig was with this guy. And now... Should happen. This was twenty. Uh, so eleven years later, same guy. So that was cool. That was really cool to see someone from from uh, my first extra gig to also be on this extra gig. So that was cool. I, did he recognize? He said, "Yeah, yeah." I thought he recognized me, but I mean, who knows? I'm just extra talent. He just wants me to do what he says. Um, it was a great time, though. It was awesome. Um, just basically sat there all day and reacted to what happens. I'm not going to say what happens in the scene because there is a big twist that occurs. And being that it's the... Uh, then a hot dog vendor. Next up on camera roll, you'll be the guy holding the elevator door and the hot dog vendor. You know what? I'll take it. A hot dog vendor might have a line or two. Like the guy in Batman Begins. Hey, I got kids to feed. You know, like falafel? Mm, I get that guy. I'm cool with that. Tommy. Um, so, yeah, I won't reveal what happens. There is a big twist that happens in the scene I'm in. Uh, again, it's the second to last episode, so, and it's the end of the second to last episode, so there's something big that happens. So for those of you who haven't watched it yet, I'm not going to spoil it for you, but a big event occurs, and I got to witness the big event in my walking down the steps scene, so that was cool. It's a big twist. You might see it coming, you might not. Those of you who've already binged it already know what I'm talking about, but if you haven't, I'm not going to spoil it here. But yes, I got to see it happen. But it was awesome. It was cool. I wasn't able to make it to any other shooting days, sadly, because work. But it was cool to have that moment. So, your boy, for as long as Netflix exists, will always be on Netflix. That's right. The Azorian One, as featured on Netflix. We made it, guys. We made it. We made it, Crusaders. I'm on Netflix. Like, for, for like 10 seconds, but I'm on Netflix. As long as Netflix exists, and as long as 13 Reasons Why, and all their seasons stay on Netflix, your boy is on Netflix. Hmm. As Johnny Drama would say, Skip and Tosh, Victory! That's right. That's for you. There's my queen to fame. Will Smith runs by me in Pursuit of Happiness as I look at him as he runs by me. And I'm walking down the courthouse steps in the second season of 13 Reasons Why. Hmm. That's a career. That is a career. 
I should get Netflix stock options, Skip and Tosh. I should. Because if you're looking for a guy who can walk down courthouse steps with a brooding demeanor, that's this guy. Right here. That's this guy. Look at the way I walk down those steps. Look at the way I walk down those steps. I make you think that I'm up to something. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm a vigilante who just moved into town and is looking to find the guy who's starting all the smack, the stuff, the bad things that are happening in this town to those kids. Maybe I'm there to help the kids because the courts and the justice system can't do it. That's why I'm there. That's why I'm there. Watch me. Watch me walk down the steps. You're going to think Matt Murdock was there. And I had my glasses off, so my vision was probably comparable to Matt Murdock's. Maybe I'm there to clean up the town. Maybe I'm going to find the, the guy who did the bad thing to Hannah. And I'm going to take care of it, because the courts won't. Maybe I'm the guy. Maybe. Maybe not. But anyway. It's a cool dream, you know? Uh, just saying. New Netflix series where all they go down is court steps. Hey, if they did that, your star. Daddy. Uh, we just talk about court cases up and down the courthouse steps. Up and down. It's like Aaron Sorkin, West Wing style, but up and down the steps. You have to wait. You have to wait. You have to wait. So. That one just started, yeah. Reading the current, I have not read the current Avengers run yet. Uh, David Barry and Manderson have, and I'm not sure if Curtis has. I have not. I have it. I have it, but I've not read it yet. Um, again, it's been Greatest Showman and Thirteen Reasons Why in this household, minus my digital download of Iron Man. Um, but yeah, so uh, you know, look for me. I heard Booster Gold has a long beard now. Um, I saw the picture. Um, I do want to. I, I, I am curious about it. Hey, Ruru, I will gladly take the popularity of Clint Howard, Ron Howard's brother. I, I'll take it, man. I don't care. As long as his brother's directing, that, that guy has a role in every movie. Paul 13, there he is. Yeah. The beautiful mind, there he is. The, 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 how the Grinch stole Christmas, there he is. I'll take it. He has lines. He's getting a city paycheck as long as his brother's working. I'll take it. I'll take the Clint Howard. You got it. So, that is, uh, that is all I got for you today on Sunday Coffee with the Azorian One. I say that because I'm looking at the two monsters... As they finish their breakfast, they become antsy. And even the great Peter Parker, currently on Disney XD, is enough to keep them seated. They must go running. And uh, lately, they've I've decided to change their names to Thor and Hulk. Thor being Jackson, Hulk being Thomas, the younger one. Because Thomas's temper is slightly more aggressive than Jackson's. And... They are pretty much back and forth between Hulk and Thor fighting in the big gladiator arena and Hulk and Thor chilling in the uh, rest area of Thor Ragnarok. So, uh, right now, right now they're chill, but it only takes us one moment. Yeah? You want down? Okay, wait, okay? Be nice to him while he's still nice. Anyway, hope you all have a wondrous Sunday, what's left of your weekend. Uh, go do things. Go watch Deadpool. I won't get to today. Maybe next week. But go watch Deadpool. Enjoy it. Enjoy it, Wilson. This, this is the time of comics. The time of fun comic movies. Um, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, have a great Sunday. Have some coffee. Have some Phil's coffee if you're in San Francisco. Have some Phil's coffee. Are you listening, Phil's? Have some Phil's coffee if you're in San Francisco. Or if you were in San Francisco, hopefully you stopped by Phil's coffee and had some Phil's coffee because Phil's coffee is great. Phil's coffee. Am I, am I forcing the, the sponsorship thing too much? Am I, I, I just, just, just trying. I, 
I got Netflix. Time to get fills now. So, on that note, on behalf of all the KFLS Crusaders, where you can see all our information, all of our social media, all of our everything, go to thecapelesscrusaders.com. Check out our social media pages. You might have noticed on Instagram. You might have noticed on Instagram. We started something new. Show us your books. Comics in the wild. We want you to take pictures of yourself reading comics wherever you may be. Our first picture, of course, was friend of mine, Elizabeth. She was in Hawaii. Lucky. Got to be over at North Shore in Oahu. Lucky. And brought her Jessica Jones comics. And she chose to read them on the beach, took a picture of it, and sent it to me. And she is our first show us your books, comics in the wild, image. So go to our social media, go to our Instagram, you'll see her, you'll see Elizabeth right there on North Shore reading Jessica Jones. We want to know where you're reading your comics. Doesn't matter where you are, down the street, Canada, Japan, taco truck. There's a taco truck around the corner from me, I might do it. Where are you reading your comics? Take a picture of where you're reading your comics. Send it to us or tag us. Tag the Capeless Crusaders on Instagram. If you're on Twitter, the Capeless Ones. Tag us. Let us know where you're reading your comics. Use the hashtag show us your books and the hashtag comics in the wild. It'll be awesome. It's going to be fun to see where you're all uh, congregating to read your comic books. Let us know. Tag us. Once again, this is the Azorian one. Thank you for tuning in to Sunday Coffee. Sorry for the long vacation. I should be back much more permanently now. Uh, as we get closer to Memorial Day, I might be talking about more Memorial Day related stuff like Saving Private Ryan, Band of Brothers, The Pacific. I might talk about those. Yeah, buddy? Yeah, not right now. They just can't let me finish the show. They just can't let me. Memorial Day episode talk coming up. Good to see you all. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. This is the Azorian one. The Azorian one. Allergies, man. Plug the nose. This is the Azorian one. Wishing you a wonderful Sunday. And uh, be safe out there, kids. Oh, look. Fingers right in front of the camera. That's great production value right there. Good night. Morning. Whatever you got. Wherever you are. There you are. Good saying. <laughs>